these peels, the ones mm -hmm. that you see upstairs, once we've let the dough rise here, you have a little razor blade on which you... The lamb. The lamb, on which we score our mm -hmm. signature pea. Mm -hmm. Gluten Morgan a todos, estoy acá en París en frente a Poulain Boulangerie, una de las más famosas de París y vamos a ver si le encuentro a Polonia Poulain adentro para que nos haga un tour privado por la panadería. Vengan. Poulain es la panadería más icónica del mundo. Se hizo famosa gracias a Lionel Poulain, quien llegó a enviar panes recién horneados desde París a New York en un avión ultrasónico en apenas cuatro horas. Entre sus clientes más famosos estaban Frank Sinatra, Robert De Niro e incluso llegó a colaborar con Dalí en la realización de una habitación entera hecha de pan. Tras una circunstancia inesperada, a Polonia, la hija mayor de Lionel, tuvo que hacerse cargo del Imperio Polán con tan solo 18 años. Bonjour. Uh, ah, Polonia. Oh, how are you? Good. How are you doing today? Incredible. So finally I'm at Polán. Wow. Thank you for the invitation. Are you ready for a visit? Yes, please. All right. Let's go to the the bake house. Okay. Okay, do watch out because this is a working bakery mm -hmm. and so it may be okay. slippery. Hmm? Wow. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so, the banister is not for grannies, you can use it. Mm -hmm. It is really hot in here. <laughs> it is much warmer, huh? Yeah. This area in the 17th century would have been outside of Paris, technically. Mm. And these were the grounds for monasteries and convents. Uh. This bakehouse has been going on um, at least since the French Revolution, Oops. so 1789. Yeah. We've been here for a little over 90 years, mm -hmm. and what's interesting is to see how this place, because it's been time proven, mm -hmm. all of the different methodologies we use, the walls are patined, is a reflection of that. Mm -hmm. And the intelligence of appreciating the work of time the, mm -hmm. and appreciating what time teaches us on how mm -hmm. to do things. So I'll walk you through the different steps of baking bread yes, and poilade. Please. Hidden in here is our pétrin, so pétrin. our mixing bowl. It's, it's, a, it's a mixer. Yep, yeah, it's our big mix, mixing bowl, like no a mixer. big KitchenAid bowl on steroids. Yeah. And so here's the hook. Exactly. Huge hook. So it looks yeah. like a lobster's um, Yeah, bowl. interesting. So How many kilos can you put in here? 80 loaves in here. 80 loaves. Yeah. And there are almost two, two, almost two kilos. kilos. Ah, with water. Oh, a yeah. lot of poof. So this is our big mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. And then when there's a, a batch to follow, we have a piece of dough from the previous batch, yeah. which we've left behind. That is the sourdough. The sourdough or the pat fermenté. It's a little bit of the same thing, but I'm uh -huh. bastardizing a little bit the same. Uh -huh. There's many ways in which you can help a dough rise. Uh -huh. One of the ways that we use is sourdough. Yeah. You have our sourdough, which is a piece of dough from the mm -hmm. previous batch. With all the that we carry culture on. And, on, and the, and the, exactly. the yeast of all around since for many years. Since 1932. Oh, si since 1932. 1932. Wow. We add our three other ingredients, <sighs> wheat flour through here, uh -huh sea salt from Guérande mm -hmm. and water mm -hmm. through the tap. Which kind of flour do you use? It's so, as whole wheat? So this is mm -hmm. wheat flour. Wheat flour. That is stone ground. A stone ground. And in France we use... Uh, the tea, I know you have the yeah, tea. Yeah, we use the, the taux de cendre mm -hmm. um, and we use a type 80. 80, I see. So that means oh. if, you, if, you, mm -hmm. if you burn a, a kilo mm -hmm. of flour, mm -hmm. then you'll get about 80 grams of ashes. What I want to point out is that back in the day, because when you have this big bulky bag of flour, mm -hmm. yeah. if you pull it over, or the bag. Oh, it's horrible because no, it's, you're, it's all over your the back place, it's heavy your back. your back. So the smart thing is the previous yeah. generations, they left the, the flour bags yeah. upstairs. Use the gravity. And use gravity, <laughs> exactly. And so sometimes, you know, the most simple tricks, see, see. It's, it's low yeah. tech and it's pretty efficient. Yeah. We have our dough. Mm -hmm. We're going to transfer most of it in this bread box. Mm -hmm. You and you knead it till it's till you get a full uh, gluten development, or so we mix it properly, uh -huh. and then we transfer it in here. Uh -huh. and this is where it develops. So if you bring your hands closer, mm -hmm. you may feel, feel a little bit of warmth. Yes. And then if you come and smell, yeah, it smells. You know, it smells like an old barrel, and it's mm -hmm. not warm. For those who make wine, who understand the world of yeah, wine, yeah, yeah. this whole yeast, world of fermentation, of yeast. yeast. Yes. No, no, it's, um, all of these little microorganisms mm. that like a It reminds bell. me a little bit of, of cheese too. 
Yes. Mm. So what's interesting what you're saying mm. is that wine, bread, and cheese and were off. the base <laughs> of our foods. Yeah. They were fermented foods. They were the basis of our mm -hmm. diets. Yeah. And you're exactly right. We let the dough rise here a first time. How long does it take? It takes about two hours. Two hours. Oh, okay. But to double in size. Almost. Almost. The most sophisticated tools are our hands. Yeah. They're able to feel, they're able to touch and have a sense of the temperature. I call that to read the dough. I yeah. always tell my students, yeah. my followers, that you need to feel and read the dough. You're absolutely right. It is a language and mm -hmm. it's, it's a sensory language. And it's not just, oh, I, I feel this. No, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, there's sensory understand. cues. Understand. Yeah, exactly. We cut with this little dough cutter mm -hmm. the weight and volume of breads. And then we're going to check that we're even with this Roman balance. Oh, that's a, the latest technology. Uh, well, <laughs> what's interesting is that... Was this from your grandfather? Well, and even before that. Oh, before But yeah. I think what's interesting is that we use this not to weigh the loaf, but to check that we're within the right range. Ah. So you see this and you think, oh, it's a scale. But actually, the weighing happens in here mm -hmm. with our hands because we cut out mm -hmm. the weight and volume. Okay. And with the scale, we check that we're within uh -huh. a little over two kilos. Uh -huh. Around two kilos. So if you put your hand here, if you can put it here, I, I'll, I'll, here. you can keep ah, it I, I'm like a, a dough. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So this way you get a sense of what is mm -hmm. that weight and volume. Yeah. And ah. throughout our apprenticeship, this is what we developed. So here, you see a scale because that's what you've been taught. What our hands are saying and our eyes are seeing is, is it validated or not? Mm -hmm. Volume, we see volume. Exactly. Volume and weight. ¿Te gustaría aprender todos los secretos para hacer unos increíbles panes de masa madre caseros? En Gluten Morgan TV, nuestra plataforma de cursos online, tenemos las mejores formaciones para vos. Cursos de panes, pizzas, hamburguesas, conservas, panetone, pastelería, pastas italianas y mucho más. Con un método muy fácil de enseñanza y desde la comodidad de tu casa y con los mejores chefs aprenderás a hacer las recetas que siempre quisiste. Entra hoy mismo en Glutemor en TV o al primer comentario de este video y descubrí todos los cursos que tenemos para vos. Te espero. And these are the bantons. And so those are the bantons. Uff. We use this table to shape the loaves. Mm -hmm. And then we have these wicker bantons that are covered in linen. We flour them. Mm -hmm. We put the loaf inside and we let it rise. Okay. Here's the temperature. Yeah, we're yeah. at 27 we degrees. Have, we have temperatures and the clock mm -hmm. plus our hands and our five senses. Yeah. We let the dough rise in mm -hmm. here. Yes. So we create a pile of loaves mm -hmm. um, between 30 and about 50 or up to 70 loaves if mm -hmm. we wanted to. And then we're going to put it into the mm -hmm. oven. To the oven, which is a wood fire oven, right? It is a wood fire oven. Mm -hmm. um, and there you start the fire down and there? You start the fire down there. But there's no um, connection between the, the fire and the bread, or oh, so, there is? There is and there isn't. The first thing I should say is that this is a hundred ton heavy, mm. wood-fired brick oven. We heat up the oven, so we gorge it with heat. Mm -hmm. These bricks like soak up the heat, and then when it's not heated anymore, it releases the heat. Yeah. And by releasing the heat, it bakes whatever's inside of the oven. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're going to come into the... Okay. And at which temperature do you well, start? Over, over 250. Ah, over 250. Celsius, of course. So the way this oven works is that we will heat it up, mm -hmm. bring it to the temperature, then put everything we want to bake in. Uh -huh. You don't let it cool down a little bit? Well, ah. five, ten minutes. It depends on how the oven is. Okay, yeah, the temperature. But and what kind of wood do you use? So we use dry wood. So more ecological. Yes, mm -hmm. and because it's fully dry in small pieces, it mm -hmm. burns entirely. So there's very little leftovers mm -hmm. and the combustion is complete. Ah. So this is a bowl in which we normally put water, water. inside. So For steam. Exactly. So when we're heating up the oven, yes. we remove that bowl uh, ah. that's empty. Uh -huh. And and you can, you can feel the heat, right? Yes. Like, uh, it's, it's nice and warm. And so in this mm. Thing, you see this cast iron mouth uh -huh. that helps direct the flame into the oven. Ah. So we put it in place of the things. It helps direct the flame into the oven. Mm -hmm. And once the flames is out because the wood mm -hmm. is burnt, then we start baking whatever it is. We close this up. We put water into the water bowl. We mm -hmm. have the steam and we can start baking the bread. Mm -hmm. These peels, the mm -hmm. ones that you see upstairs. So once we've let the dough rise here, so you have 
a little razor blade on which you... The lamb. The lamb, on which we score our mm -hmm. signature pea. Mm -hmm. And then, and we bring it in. All right, ready to grab the bread? Wow, how fast. Did you oh, see that? Incredible. <laughs> Uh, wow. Is it not a little hot? Oh, yeah. So, ah. Now, what's interesting is to listen to the bread at this ah, point. The crackle. Exactly. Yes, I love that. So, there's a word in French for that. Um, there's actually a more in poetic French. thing is le champ du pain. Ah, le champ du pain, yeah. So all of the loaves are baked. We put them one against the other, and they lose a little bit of water. And by yeah. doing that, they crackle and it goes Yeah, I love that sound. It's Beautiful. Yeah. And as a baker, you know that it's mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. baked because it has this crackling. And it's something very exciting because it's the accomplishment mm -hmm. of the work. But it's yeah. not quite done yet because, of course, even with your expert hands, as you see, it was warm. So mm -hmm. we have to let it cool a little yeah. bit so that we can sell it. We, we need to let it cool down, then we, we need to let it cool test down, it. And then we can test it. Okay, thank you. Maybe we do a first quick stop in this room. So we're in the heart of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, mm -hmm. in the left bank of Paris, and in this shop, my grandfather yes. in 1932 started here. Almost 100 years ago. Almost 100 years yes. ago, exactly. And I heard that he used to sit over there, Exactly, right? he used to mm. sit right behind me, mm -hmm. and from there he used to be able to see everything happening in the store. Some tricks he had. Some tricks we had before CCTV, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you can see on the walls here is uh, a little bit of the heritage of that area. When mm -hmm. my grandfather, when he started, there were a lot of artists and craftsmen yeah. in an area that was being gentrified. So they started exchanging bread for art. things and <laughs> arts because it was an era, because it was les copains, the people with whom you mm -hmm. shared bread. Mm -hmm. so they help each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that legacy has been ongoing, mm -hmm. whether it's more recent pieces like this one comes from an Austrian that's artist. That's ceramic, right? That's exactly, that's mm. ceramic. Mm -hmm. we put it up just before the pandemic. I used to do it as a kid ceramic. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I, what I love with ceramic as a material is that it's baked earth. It's the it's same, the same ideas process. as the, the baking, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. This is a lithography, which is a Oof. printing style that happens in Montparnasse. And this uh -huh. is one of the last item places the last where they, they do it in oh. Paris. And all of these pieces reflect artists' sensibilities of an era of Paris mm -hmm. and, you know, and bread. Europe, <laughs> the neighborhood, mm -hmm. or abroad. What I see is that the score is not the, the score yes. of Poland. <laughs> it's only been since 2000 that at Poland mm -hmm. we do a P. Something new. It is something new. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like a, a tiny detail, but mm -hmm. it actually makes a difference in the way the bread crackles. Uh -huh. So historically, we do these drawings because mm -hmm. it helps distinguish our bread from it's a another person's bread. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's a signature. The scoring really helps. It's a touch just mm -hmm. before you put your bread into the oven mm -hmm. to make a difference for your loaf. So mm -hmm. say you have a loaf that's, has a, that's having a hard time to, to rise and it's not things, and then you score it very deeply and you say, come on, now it's time to give her everything. Yeah. The crumb yes. changes. 100%, mm -hmm. yes. It changes. So, and so I think it's, it's this thing where it's both aesthetic mm -hmm. and practical. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's a signature. That's... And it's a signature, mm -hmm. and it's a way that the baker can give a final touch mm -hmm. in terms of a final hand mm -hmm. to make the most beautiful loaf possible. Mm -hmm. And what could be interesting is to see every baker's its pea. That's one of the distinctive uh -huh. things is by yeah. now... They're not all the same. Now that we do the pea, they're mm -hmm. not all the same, <laughs> and I can really recognize different baker's ah. peas because they have so you can then call them and say, your no, pea today voilà. was, not was not that so great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were talking to me about this chandelier, chandelier. So and I chandelier. heard something about Dali. Exactly. We have a lot of people from Spain from watching Spain? these videos. Salvador Dali, in mm -hmm. the 70s, in Paris, was living at L'Hôtel Maurice. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to surprise Gala, mm -hmm. his partner, by creating a whole bedroom made out of Yes, bread. I heard of that. And he had met my father a couple of years earlier, oh and had asked him to do different objects made out of bread, and he did this the chandelier. And the whole, the whole bread, there was, there was a bed, a wardrobe. There was a bed, there was a cabinet, there was okay. a chandelier, there was <laughs> a bedside, I mean everything. A lamp. Know, a lamp. So this chandelier is made out of dough bread or dough. bread, exactly. bread dough. It's bread and dough. And every time we 
put a new chandelier in place. Yes. How, How long often? does it so last? So this one we just put in place, and the previous one had last three years. This bread dough reacts to changes in the temperature. So if it's hot and humid, and then dry and cold, ah. it's these differences that make the dough work and that degrade it. And how do you I find out? I have a piece that I've had in... Because something falls? <laughs> no, 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 I no, think no, it's no. time to change. We made before that, we made before that. <laughs> I've made some pieces of bread thing and I found it, it's, it's 14 years old. Oof. So it's pretty impressive. Oof, impressive. There is a possibility that we can taste a little bit of chandelier oh, with butter. Are you kidding? No? No. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. Really interesting room with a lot of I'm going to take your hands story. and I'm going to take you down to the bakehouse before you start okay. so, doing a tartine with my, <laughs> with my... So now comes the best part, the tasting part. The tasting, part. right? All right, so let's cut this big loaf of bread. Whoa. I never get tired of that sound. So Ramon, you can see like there's a nice and even crumb. Even crumb. And I love the color, which is really creamy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this comes from the work of the shaping of the loaf and a nice rise in the oven. The artisan work. But it's not that it's thick. It's not that thick, thick either. So yeah. it's this nice balance. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so and it's crunchy, it's crunchy. On the outside. So you can smell it while I cut some pieces so we oh. can taste. Wow. All right. So I love the smell. The smell is incredible, mm, no? The smell is incredible. Freshly baked. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we're going to be coupons okay. by sharing bread. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ding. I love the, the crumb. Loaf. It's really soft, tender. It's tender. Creamy. You can and it feel pulls that apart. It's Take a look at this. But it's Easily. got structure nonetheless. Incredible. And when you cut the... Mmm. The crumb. It's crispy, crunchy. But not that hard. You have texture, you the have texture. flavors, the retro olfaction comes slowly with the acidity of the fermentation, but it's not... Not that acid. Not that acid, it's perfect. not aggressive. It's yes, just because this nice balance. Your sourdough starter is so refreshed every day by yep. using it, so you keep the acidity lower, yep. I think. But it's perfect. The taste is incredible. Well, I could be eating this bread all day. Maybe some so butter. I, don't you have some butter? I don't, I'm not in my pockets <laughs> today. Sorry. Speaking well, thank you. Muffle. Apollonia. Yeah. It's been an honor to be here it's at your grandfather's room. Yes, and it's yes. been a pleasure to greet you at the bakery. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thank you for the personalized <laughs> tour. <laughs> Have a great rest of your trip. and Thank you. Yeah, th thank you for coming today. And all that you're watching this, you know, when you come to Paris, you have to come to Poulain, right? There's this bakery and four other four locations. More. Okay, so you'll find one near your hotel. <laughs> so leave us some comments. What do you think about everything that you've seen today? And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Espero que hayas disfrutado y te hayas interesado, como a mí me parece, en este fascinante mundo de la masa madre. Así que si tenés ganas de continuar con esto y seguir profundizando en el tema, te invito a que participes del curso completo de panes con masa madre. Puedes hacerlo acá en el link de esta página. Espero verte muy pronto horneando esas nuevas recetas.